Okay, so uh, just a quick demo of the infrared special edition of the Aeroflux. So just before I go lights out and uh, show the functionality, just a quick quick tour of the, the things that make this a little bit different. So as you can see on the front, we have infrared logos. And on this side, we have the thermal anomaly detection function, which is only present on these versions of the Aeroflux. Um, this side as well, there's a slight change to the, the way that I've had the uh, the sound come out of the device, just embedded rather than outputted. It's uh, less wear and tear, I think, on the on the box itself. Just a little improvement from the versions I've been putting out. Otherwise, uh, everything else is identical. 9 volt scan from the bottom. And uh, let's go light out and check it out. Okay, so now we've got the lights dimmed a little bit. Let's uh, go through the functionality. So, first things first, let's switch it on. Power bar on the top. Initially, it goes through a little calibration cycle while it flashes yellow, and then it will show green when it's now recording. So. Kind of like the thermal anomaly detector, there's a rolling period of calibrated pressure read readings, and then a second rolling smaller period of pressure readings. And the idea being, is based on the research that I've done throughout the last few years from the, the uh, pressure sensing equipment we've been monitoring on every investigation, we've seen that uh, short, sharp changes in the fluctuation are indicative of something occurring and that amount of fluctuation and that uh, waveform fluctuation is captured by those two moving measures of the of the sensors and what we've also found is there's this kind of um sort of two plateaus so you, you have amount of fluctuation which seems to be indicative of smaller changes uh, little taps little blips on the k2 etc Things which aren't aren't major events, but there are some amount of flexure, fluctuation changes which are more addictive of the larger ones, which happen less frequently, but are usually quite dramatic. So that's replicated on this device as well. So the way that works is I can replicate a little bit of a pressure fluctuation using the old air duster. And this should force enough additional pressure into the close vicinity of the sensor which would then hopefully, getting it about right, trigger <laughs> these conditions. So let's get back to stab. So keep it nice and level so it doesn't get hit in cold. Well. Okay, so what we detected there was a little bit too much, and we have a purple alert. Now, the uh, purple alert on the Standard Aeroflux is, is red, but um, because I wanted to try and, and keep red away from the pressure, because I wanted to use it for the temperature, I've got I've changed the way it's working to purple. Also, the sound that comes off is, is a lot different. On the standard ones, it's more of a beeping. This one, it sounds more like a red alert ship alarm. So, let's see if we can get the, uh, get the amber. There we go. A little tiny fluctuation but sharp creates a nice, nice amber with a tiny little beep so that happens more frequently I've been watching some live streams with another, another team who's um, picked up a couple of these and they've uh, certainly found it useful and then when it turns amber they're more aware of what's going on and then they focus on those things whereas the, the reds oh how's breaking news there right you've just come back again What's this I've in my hand, spirit? Hello. Hello. Can you tell me again what's this I have in my hand? Oh, oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God
Your yeah, mum's just put in that something moving up and down this corridor. Yeah, it's just walked over that. It's all red. That means it's actually there. There's a high presence here. It's all the yeah. flux. So, um, the difference on these infrared ones then is, is the thermal anomaly detector. So after I switch that on, it will tell me what if it's on or off. So put it on, it'll flash red, do a higher tone, turn it back off again, flashes blue, goes a lower tone. So let's turn it back on. So now at the moment it's doing both the pressure sensing and the thermal normally detecting. It's doing it in the order of pressure first, temperature second. And it does all that in one cycle. So if something dramatic happens in, in one instant, it will show you there's a pressure change first, and then it will show you if there's a temperature change second, but it's on the same cycle. So it doesn't miss anything while it's doing one alarm. There we go, nice little, little bit of hot breath, and we've got red flash, nice tone to, to, to get you to look at the thing, and that light stays on while it recalibrates, so it then takes that, that longer calibration and, and the shorter moving one as well, just to make sure we, we stay fairly accurate and calibrated. So let's see if we can get it to go cold. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to do cold. The trick here is to try and avoid doing the pressure changes by putting it too close. Okay, yeah, there you go. Took some fiddling to try and avoid getting the pressure to change too much, but the temperature changed enough. But uh, yeah, that seems to work okay. switch that back off again and then it starts to ignores the, ignores the temperature changes okay so got all the other cases ready to go just need to uh, now got the software sorted put the electronics and the arduinos in these ones and then I can send them across